Rock City Networks and ToneDeaf.com.au coming to you from Face the Music 2011 and uh, joining me here on the lovely leather couches, Darren Sinicki from Sinicki Lawyers. How are you? I'm really well. How are you? I'm good, thanks, mate. Uh, now you've you've just stepped out of a uh, you've just stepped out of a, a panel discussion, and yeah. when you were explaining, uh, it's called "What's Mine Is Yours." Yeah, and, um, that's right. Man, what an interesting topic that is. It's basically, uh, I guess, relationships between band members between, in bands. That's right, between band members. And we were discussing um, effectively what happens when things can go wrong and who owns what, who, who's going to get what, um, who owns the songs, who owns the right to the band name, um, who gets the money from record sales and all the issues, all the business issues that exist between bands. So, yeah. so we tried to cover a whole bunch of stuff. What were the main, what, I mean, obviously there are a lot of the main points there, but I mean, what was the advice given to the people there by you well, on some of those topics? Yeah, look, the thrust, of, the thrust of the panel was to try and get your agreements in writing. So I think we're all there just selling that message um, that in the absence of anything in writing, there's potentially a whole bunch of trouble down the track. Mm. So that, that's, yeah, that was our message. Um, questions asked to you from the audience uh, with people in those situations currently? Yeah, look, absolutely. Um, the biggest one is actually um, concerns sort of songwriting. Yeah. I mean, often in a band, you've got one or two guys that write most of the songs. So whether you're currently in a band or you're, you're an ex-band member, um, people want to know how the money for that works because obviously money, there's more money for the songwriters, but... You know, you want to keep everyone in the band happy, so that's a that's a real issue. And and the other one is, you know, I was in a band and I sort of featured on their recording, and now I'm not in it anymore. But that recording's about to be released, and they're marketing it and selling it, and it's my drumming all over that recording. You know, what are my rights? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's uh, it's it's a really interesting topic, and I think it's something that should have been brought to a head earlier. But should is a you know <laughs> dirty word, isn't it? Really, should well, I should I should have done this? Should yeah, have done that. Yeah, and, and look, we're trying to sell the message that. You know, it's not too scary to go to a lawyer, and we're also there with the Arts Law Centre, who, who do a good job and, and provide you know really, um, uh, you know, cheap, for want of a better term, you know, advice and access to templates and things. So you know, people just need to make that. You know, it's not cool to think about. Let's be honest. You know, yeah. you know, musos just want to jam and play music and not create wait. and have and a bit of fun. That's yeah. it. That's it. And, but there is another side to it, and there is a business side to it that, if you're going to be in the music business, that you've got to sort of think about. Yeah, okay. So apart from the obviously the basic step of get everything in writing, yeah. which you've just mentioned, yeah. are there any sort of start-off points for people out there watching right now that are going, oh, this is just blowing my mind, how do I get around the legal stuff, how do I get involved in it, and, and, and how, how do I make the right decisions? Um, look, there's some good online resources. Yeah. Um, you know, like oh, I mentioned the AIM and Australian Music Industry Network, I think they've got a good website and they've got some good things there. but. Um, I reckon just just talk, like, you know, sort of do some reading, do some online reading, but talk to each other. Like, you know, you're, you're four members of a, of a band and either you've written a song together, or you've got together during the day and bought a slab and written three or four songs, either that's happened or, for example, or one guy's rocked up and said, here's the song I've written, let's play it. Now, you've got two different sort of situations. So, you know, say, say to each other, well, should we just go even, you know, let's just split everything evenly. In, in what we do today, and then at least you've got some sort of, um, you know, basis in which to, to go forward. You haven't had to spend any money on lawyers or anything like that, but just have the com have the conversations. Um, if we're about to fund an EP, for example, which is what's happening all the time, um, you know, some some members of the band might be paying a lot more just because they can afford to. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have someone in the, in the band who's got no money and can't afford to contribute, but he's still an equal member of the band. So. Just because one person's put in more, well, what does that mean? Do they get a higher royalty rate, or 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 do they just get their money back? Just just it's a lot of common sense stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, um, also with uh, with your attendance here, you do, you're conducting a workshop. Yeah, so we did a workshop. Well, this did morning. a workshop. Yeah, did a workshop me. this morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was look, it was really along the same lines. I think in the workshop this morning, what it was more about was actual band agreements and things to think about, um, sort of before coming to see your lawyer because we draft them and. And, you know, let's be honest, lawyers aren't, aren't cheap, so we're actually there giving advice to people how they can save a lot of money um, with lawyers and actually think about, think about the issues before they, they come into our office. Yeah. Much easier if they come in and go, this is what we want, one, two, three, write it up, yeah. rather than, let's, like we're doing now, let's raise all these issues and discuss them and in the lawyer's office. While you're getting charged for the time, right. which is, you know, you, you've got to eat man money, you know, business is money and that that's sort right. of thing. That's so, right. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's great advice because I guess uh, 
and you would be aware of this. I don't think it's so much anymore, and especially with people like yourself and, and Paul O'Gorman and other lawyers we've spoken to, yeah. giving us your time on camera and, and being accessible to people out there that may not get into... Are you going to charge me for this? <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> um, but, you know, know, making yourself accessible as well and, 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 and give, getting the... Uh, you know, giving the right information, like prepare yourself before you come in, so you know yeah. you're not spending so much time in here. That's which right. is, you know, that's 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 really a great thing to put forward. And um, what, where where do you where do you see uh, music law headed uh, going into? I mean, there's just so much happening with the, the online stuff and the digital distribution, yeah. and and I mean, these music conferences making people more aware yeah. of what they're supposed to do. Where where does where does, where does entertainment and music law head? Yeah, that's that's actually a really good question, which I'm, I haven't thought about that much. I mean, I suppose. I suppose because there's more and more, like, let's just say, happening. Yeah. You know, there's more access. There's there's more happening with music, isn't there? I mean, whether it's whether there's more um, uh, avenues of streaming, streaming music, um, buying music, licensing music, um, you know, just general distribution. Um, new formats are going to come and go. At the end of the day, you know, there's still um, the issue. It probably becomes more important as to who owns what. Mm -hmm. Okay, just because there's different revenue streams, the essence is still the same. You know, who owns who owns the sound recording? Who's written the songs? Mm -hmm. So I think that even though there's all this sort of, you know, weird, complex internet digital stuff happening, at the end of the day, people are still writing songs and then they're recording them. So that's not going to change. And as the industry grows and there's more people doing things and putting their, their songs online and things like that, yeah, there's more there's more issues out there and there's more for us to do to sort of protect the rights of, of copyright owners, but essentially, you know, the issues are the same as to who owns what rights. Mm -hmm. Well, makes, fantastic. That makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> it makes perfectly good sense. Uh, well, Darren, thank you very much for joining us. Thank we you. really just wanted to, uh, to sit down and have a chat and, and get inside your head a little bit and, and possibly, uh, you know, find some advice or, or get some information that will be great for our, for our viewers because they always take a lot from this. Yeah, and, cool. um, you know, really appreciate your time because we know time is precious. Thanks so, uh, for having me. Thank you very much for Good joining night. us here. Cheers. And uh, if you want any more information, I believe the website is sinikilawyers.com. Sinikilawyers, S-A-N-I-C-K-I, lawyers.com.au. Lawyers .com .com Excellent. Cool. Uh, and go check it out if you need some advice. It's, uh, we'll put it up there on the screen for you. It's uh, Darren Sinicki here from Face the Music 2011 for Rock City Networks and tonedef.com.au.